Hey, what is up everyone and welcome back to another video. Today's video we continue with the MongoDB crash course. So in today's video we'll be doing basic CRUD operations. CRUD stands for create, read, update and delete. So doing all of the basic um, things that most applications need from their database. So we'll be just taking a quick look at that, playing around in the database, just getting you used to how all of these things work together. And then um, we continue diving deeper into individual topics. So a concept I want to revisit from the previous video is how MongoDB is structured. So the idea behind a database, a collection and a document. So the white part represents the server. So on our server, we can have multiple databases and under a database, we get collections. So under collections we get documents so th this is the tree of how it works down so if you understand uh, this concept that we navigate into a database then into a collection and then we query whatever documents we'd like in that in that collection so if you understand that then it will make following the course really really easy okay so now that you you've seen that little bit of theory I just want to show you the two ways of starting your MongoDB server and opening the shell. So the first one is if you followed my tutorial, we have this bat file that just runs a script. It navigates into the installation um, directory and then it runs MongoD, which is the server, and then it runs the shell. So basically this will happen. It runs the server and then it pops up the shell. Here I can run MongoDB commands just like that. Okay, so that's the one way. If you're not doing it like that and you use a different operating system, you just open a terminal after you follow the installation guide and then you can say sudo mongod. It's important to run mongod first, but I'm not on Mac or Linux, so I can just say mongod and then it will start the server and then in the second terminal you just run mongo or once again sudo in front if you're on the other two. Just like that and now I'm in the shell with this um, terminal just like that okay so I'll be using the bat file because it just makes it really quick to open I don't really do much um, but with that out of the way let's continue okay so now that we have started the MongoDB server and the shell we can enter our first command and this is show DBs basically what this would do it, it would just list all of the available databases that is running on your server so we want to create our own one. So databases are created implicitly. So you can create it without it even existing or you can use it without it even existing. It will just create it. So for example, we can see there is no database called shop. So if we say use shop, we would think it won't work, but it would just see, okay, there is no shop and you want to use a shop. So let's create a shop. So if we do that, it can we can see it says switched to DB shop. So now if I were to run show DBs again, you would see it doesn't show up. And the reason for this is we did create this database, but there's no data inside of it yet. So it doesn't show up here. So now we have to create a collection and inside of this collection, we have to add a document so that there is actual data in this database. So let's create a collection. So in order to create a collection, we can first of all see that there is no collections if I type in show collections, it will show me the collections of the current database I'm switched into. So the shop database currently has no collections. So in order to create one, we say DB dot and then the collection name. So I'll give it the name of stock. And um, we can say insert one, just like this. And then at the end of this, we add a document that has a JSON like syntax. So here we can place in title and we don't, the key value pair, we don't have to add the quotation marks around the key part. We only have to do it when there's a string for the value part. So we can say here a book and it has a price, so comma, a price of 2.99. So if I were to press enter now, we can see acknowledge true and insert it into this um, into the database with this unique ID. So now if I were to say show DBs, we can see shop shows up here because if we go into shop and say show collections, we can see there's a stock collection now. So if we want to see what is inside of the stock collection in the shell, we just say db.stock 
dot find and then we pass it uh, empty per empty parameters and then we press enter and we can see the data inside so now if we want to print this data out in a more readable fashion especially when the collection gets rather large then printing it out in this fashion just makes it easier easier to read so press up arrow key and say dot pretty as a function and then it would print it in this JSON like syntax so if you look at this way um, the data is stored and to this which is actual JSON you can see it is basically the exact same MongoDB just uses BSON which stands for binary JSON so um, it's basically the same format so if you've worked with uh, APIs or JSON before then understanding how um, the data looks is pretty straightforward okay so now that we have seen how to create a database in a collection let's see how we can delete one so if you wanted to delete a database you can just go into the database by saying use shop for example and then now we're inside of the database we can say db dot drop database just like this so if you do that it would say okay shop is dropped and if you would would to drop a collection you would just say db dot stock dot drop just drop like this and it would drop the collection but there currently isn't any collection because I deleted the database so this is how you would do these few things okay so in my slides I'm going to show you the most important CRUD operation um, commands in MongoDB so let's go over to that okay so now that we have played around in the database for a little bit uh, let's look at some of the most important commands for creating documents uh, the most important two commands are insert one and insert many so insert one allows you to insert one data object at a time and then it takes in some options separated by a comma then we have insert many that takes an array of data objects and also some options we'll take a look at these options in more depth when we get to the individual operation videos then with the read we have find and find one so this is basically the reading the the, the querying of the data so then we have some filter so you want to find something by some filter we'll look at how we can structure these filters in the um, individual videos in much more depth and string different queries together to find um, the right data and then the options on both of these would be some type of projection if you would like to change certain fields to show or not so find one obviously just returns the first instance where the filter was found to be true with update we have three so we have update one which takes in a filter then the data you want to um, update and then some options the many also takes in a filter and then also some data which you want to change them with and then some options then we have replace one and replace one is basically the data overrides the update completely so it doesn't just add new fields it completely overrides so this is if you want to completely override a data entry or a document and then for delete we have delete one and delete many delete one by a filter and then some options and then delete many by some filter so delete one obviously will only delete one where the filter is true delete many will delete all of them where the filter is true okay so first let's start off by using insert one for one more time i've used it previously before but let's quickly create our database so we don't have a database and we want to create a database and say use blogger just like this and we want to create our user so we can say users dot insert one and then we add in the user and it said a user looks as follows so it has a name and this would be me Lloyd and it will have a surname just like this JVR and it will have an email and this can be Lloyd at gmail.com okay and then we'll have an address and this address is going to be another 
document so another object and inside of this we have city and we say New York and inside there we have one more which is street and this would be Wall Street and then we have one last thing so outside of this one um, that is correct we're still inside here so we say hobbies and hobbies is, will be an array of lists so let's say soccer and let's say programming just like this so if I would say enter now we can say acknowledgement is true and it inserted the, the with a unique ID so you might ask why am I doing this in the shell why can't I just type it in um, Visual Studio you can and then just paste it in the reason I do it in the shell is because this really lets me think about what I'm doing it makes me feel more using MongoDB from the core okay so let's insert more users but this time using insert many so if I were to clear this and go to show DBs, we can see blogger is there now. Now we can say show collections to see the users collection. And here we can say find user dot find dot pretty. Just like this. Okay. And there we can see the one. So let's add two more users. I'm gonna do this by using insert many. So I'm gonna say db dot users dot insert many and this takes an array of documents so we want to insert many so the first one will be name of Taiwan and a surname of Lannister I'm not even sure if I'm spelling that correctly and then we'll have an email of Taiwan at gmail.com which they probably didn't live in but whatever and then we have address and this is once again a document and we can say city is equal King's Landing and then street Red Street just like this then we can add one more thing which is hobbies and this could be um, horse riding like this I'm not even sure which two words anyway okay so that is one document so now we go after this curly brace and add another document so this would be another user so we can say name Jimmy comma surname and this would be you Jimmy you I don't know email and gym at gmail.com just like this then we we'll have address which would have city of LA and I don't know any streets in LA so I'm just gonna say street ABC just like this and then the last one is hobbies and this is once again an array and let's just say exercise just like that and now we cross our fingers and hope it goes through let's say this again okay, and it acknowledged and we have two entries with their unique IDs so now if we were to go and db.users.find here we can see the users let's print it out pretty because that's just not readable for me okay and here we have our users user 1 user 2 and user 3 so we would like to be able to update something from a specific user so now that we've inserted let's try and update a user next so I'm just going to clear this and then let's try updating okay so now we want to update some of the data so let's just quickly look at the data again so what I'm going to try and update is I'm going to find this user by this ID and I'm going to update its city to something else so let's do that i'm going to say db users dot update one and then some filter with some data the filter will be where the underscore id is equal to this id so i'm just selecting it 
just leaving it like that and then right clicking twice and then it pastes it in okay and now I want to set something on this user I said I wanted to change the address um, city so I want to change the address to whatever I want to then I can say city Texas and I update should put semicolons around Texas and I update I can see the acknowledgement was true I can find my users again and now I can see that it updated the address but it completely removed the street and the reason for this is because I have reset this it's the same as with an, the array I have totally reset this so if I wanted to go back so let's reset this street just like this and I save and I go back now it would be the same as previously now I just want to update the New York so I would go and do the following okay so if I clear that now I want to update only the city so my data looks like this okay I only want to make that Texas so I'm going to say the following DB users dot update one I pass in the filter and then the data and for the filter I want it I don't have its ID now I think let's see I do okay um, where the object ID the underscore ID is equal to this object ID and then I change by saying dollar sign set and I want to change and this is where um, the secret happens so here I can nest into an another document with the dot notation but this requires the key to have quotation marks around it so this would be inside of address so quotation mark address dot city and then close the quotation marks so this now is only going to set inside of the address document the city key it's going to change it and we're going to set this equal to texas so if i were to save this and run i can see it acknowledged one and it updated one so let's search again and here we can see that it didn't completely override the entire document it just changed the city to texas so that's how you would update something like that okay so now that we've seen how update one works let's update many so let's say we want to add something new to all of our users that is a new feature say and let's say relationship status so I'm gonna say DB users dot update many then I pass in the filter and then I pass in what I want to update so I want to update everything all of my user entries so I'm just gonna leave it blank and I want to add a field relationship status and initially set everyone everyone's status to unknown and they can later go and update it themselves in your application so if I do this and set oh I forgot to add the underscore set and then closing the brackets if I update it like this we can see there was three match counts because I searched for everything and it modified three things so let's go check in our data by finding all our users we can see all of them has this relationship status unknown field so if one of them would you go and change it so let's quickly find them and let's change one of them users dot update one I'm doing update one again just quickly where the underscore ID is equal to this person and we want to change so dot set the relationship status relation to single just like this and update now if we close it and search for our users again we can see these are all unknown and then this one is changed to single so that's how we would update something so let's quickly take a look at a few ways to query how we can use the find in in more advanced ways okay so now we want to use the find method so first let's quickly recap by adding a few posts so i'm going to say db post so if i show collections we 
we currently only have users so I want to create a post collection and I'm going to use insert many and we want to create posts I'm going to create so it's an array of posts I'm going to create let's say three posts the first post is going to have a caption post one it's going to have a body something cool for post one and I know this is really repetitive but this is how you are going to have to get used to working with data if you're especially if you're a back-end engineer you should learn to work with data fast and um, in this type of raw format so okay uh, then we have the author this Lloyd if you want to create a relationship you'll add a unique relationship you'll add the user ID I don't have that now then we have tags which is an array of strings that is of hunting and swimming just like this this is these are the tags and then the next one we have a caption post two we have the body something else random and then we have a author I'm just going to set this equal to Tywin and uh, then we can add the tags and here I'm going to add swimming rich life just like that okay and then the last one we can add caption and we set this equal to post 3 give it a body even before just like this and then we add the last thing which is the tags just like this okay and here we can add voting YOLO something like that and we add this and we can see it created three new entries and then we can start finding on them so the u one you see me use the whole time is the one which is just the empty empty parentheses so this would just find all of the posts so now I want to find a post um, by say its tags so I can say db dot post dot find and pretty this once again and I can find something in a filter and here I can say where the tags is equal to swimming so it should give us uh, these two because th th those two have swimming so if you um, print it out you can see those two was selected and you can use different type of things um, on the property for swimming so let's say we want to find everything where the tags are equal to swimming or there is a tag that exists that is equal to swimming so this is important to note if you want this checks if there is a swimming tag that exists in the array it does not check that that is the only thing in the array if you want to check that it's the only thing in the array then you place array brackets around it like this so now it will find nothing because n none of these has only swimming Yes, but let's remove that and let's use something called um, projection to only display or send back the necessary fields so I want to find every post where the um, tags contain swimming and I only want the author's name so here I can say author and set this equal to one and then then if I press search I see it printed out these two it gives me the ID it always sends you back the ID as well and then the author name so this is something called projection so I projected it by adding the options um, object and inside of the objects I specified author with a one so zero would be false so if I for instance don't want to show this um, ID I can up arrow key and with the underscore ID you should specifically say zero for it to not show so now if I did um, press enter you only see the author's names so uh, and then the last I think crowd operation so we'll dive deeper into more finding operations in the individual video but um, 
the last thing for CRUD operations will be the delete one and delete many. So if we go back to the users and say db.users.find.pretty, we can see all of these that has a relationship status of unknown, I want to delete. So that would be a delete many. Um, or for instance, if you only want to delete the first one you find that has an unknown, it will delete only the first one it finds to be true. So let's delete one. Okay, so I'm first going to do something that lets us delete this entry right over here. So I'm going to say db.users.delete1. I send in some filter. And in here, I want where the name is equal to Jimmy. Just like this. Sorry, Jimmy. Okay, there we have deleted. So if I clear and I search the users, I only see two. And another neat thing you can do if you don't want to see how many, how all the data you just say count and then it just gives you the, uh, the amount of um, documents inside of the collection okay so now if I wanted to delete um, the users that has an unknown relationship status so here I'm going to say DB users dot delete many because I know it's more than one and here I can say where relationship status is equal to unknown just like this boom and you can see acknowledge true and it deleted too so now if I were to go back to DB users dot find I will see nothing is being returned because I just deleted everything okay so this is basically um, this for this video I just tried and went over all of the basic things so you can see how the rest of this course will be going I would mainly be using the shell, I would giving little scenarios and then I would just play those queries out inside of the shell, inside of the shell. So that you just um, get the typing experience and the muscle memory with the learning of why and how. Okay, so that is the end of the video today. Um, I just have to mention that the most important things and the in detail work is going to be done uh, in these sections, these cr CRUD operation sections where I focus on each individual aspect of creating, reading, updating and deleting data from your MongoDB database. So these um, first few is just to get us to understand what exactly are we doing and why are we doing it and just working with terminology and just playing around a little bit to get the feeling of what is going where. So stick with me through the scores and then um, hopefully at the end you got a lot out of it. But uh, thanks, this is all for the video for today and then I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.